Hey, you're listening to the Smoke Meat Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Pittman. Smoke Meat's brought to you by Joe's Underground at the corner of 8th and Broad in Augusta, Georgia, in the bottom of the Lamar Building. Joe's is a great place. Jeremy and the gang make you feel like family from the second you walk in the door for the first time. Joe's is my home club. I love going down there any chance I get. Don't get to go a lot right now, but I'm going back. They've been so great to me. Remember, that's Joe's Underground, the corner of 8th and Broad in Augusta, Georgia. I goes to Joe's, and so should you. Now today, my guest is a young lady named Shalita Burke. Shalita is a phenomenal talent. She's a great singer, and she is also a data scientist and understands all the social media things that an old man like me doesn't. She's also a futurist. Such a great lady. You'll enjoy hearing me talk to her, so... Without further ado, we're going to get this beast kicked off here on Smoked Meat. Hey, Shalita, how are you doing today? I am doing so fabulous today. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I have been looking forward to this interview because, you know, looking at your website and, you know, talking to Eileen, you are so interesting. Um, Musician, data scientist, I mean, you've, just the stuff you've done with data and computers is like, holy crap. (laughs) You know, and, and you're somebody that, you know, you know how to how to take the bull by the horns and, you know, do do what you need to do. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's pretty cool. You know, t- tell me a little bit about yourself. Oh, my gosh. It's so hard to talk about yourself, right? That's I know. one of my favorite things to do. Just <laughs> 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 Well. Um, right now, I'm exploring new territories, um, and I'm taking those territories and I'm translating that into pieces of music. Like one of my new obsessions has been this thing called an altimeter, mm-hmm. and you need one of those when you do something called skydiving, which is something I did just a couple of days ago for the first time in my life. Oh, nice! And I heard like an orchestra of sounds that I'm not used to hearing when I was in the air, dropping from 14,000 feet to the ground, like sounds I just didn't even think about, you know, that were just surrounding me and that were just inspiring and seeing the nature from like a bird's eye view. was so powerful. Like, wow. Like I've always wanted to fly. And to me, that was like my first time being very close to bird-like activities, you know? Mm-hmm. And I just recommend it for everyone. It's just, it makes you feel differently about life. And yeah, I just, I recommend it to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I've never done it before. You know, I've never actually even flown. And, uh, Are you serious? Serious. Wait, and, wait, 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 wait. Really? Yeah, really. I've never been off the ground. And the funny thing is that was going to be my job in the army was to jump out of planes. Wait, have you ever flown in a plane before? Never. Oh, you haven't even been inside of a plane before? No, never okay. never flown. Well, there's, there's always new horizons, new days, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Oh, that yeah. That actually makes it even more exciting when you do it for the first time. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I'm meeting so many new people doing, doing this show, and... Part of me, you know, I'm wanting to make plans to come out to California and come out to New York and, you know, see them and just meet the people. And I, I think that'll be so neat because I'm, I'm talking to people I would never get to talk to otherwise. Oh, my gosh. That's so true. Wow. Yes. Yeah. and, and Well, right now, I'm not sure where you would go, given the current state of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It would be a different experience for, you know, because of the different regulations happening right now and just different comfort levels of health precautions and, you know, but it's still something that you should definitely put on your bucket list. Oh, it it, it definitely is because, you know, I'm, I'm elbow deep in this pandemic. You know, I'm a full-time paramedic. And wow. Yeah, so I'm I'm seeing all this firsthand, and here in Georgia yeah. we're actually having a spike. It's not a real huge one, but we're having one, and I'm ready for this thing to be over. Well, 
hopefully you are staying safe. Oh, definitely. We we keep our masks on, and we, you know, I I try to social distance, but my partner sits two feet from me all night. So, but I'm pretty sure exactly what he's been into, and he's exactly sure what I've been into, and we we still social distance and we right, wash right. our hands and all that. We basically the way to beat this thing is do what you learned in kindergarten: wash your hands, don't cough on people, and behave. That is good advice. Yeah. Yeah, just go back to kindergarten. But yeah. Um, so yeah, I like the the fact that, you know, when you were skydiving, you know, you paid attention to the different sounds because I'm I'm like that. I'm a sound person. I love love exploring new things and and being able to record them even. And, you know, the skydiving with the wind part, the recording may be tough, but when when we finish with this, I'll tell you about some equipment that you can get that can actually record that pretty well, and that wow. may be something to yeah, incorporate. Yeah, nature. nature has its own soundtrack, and it's always unique. Yeah, definitely. Because, you know, I, I grew up in the woods, and I live in town now. I live up near Atlanta, but I grew up in a small town out of Augusta, so, I mean, always I can sit out on my back porch at night when I go home down there, and... Just hear so many different things. You know, you hear crickets, you hear frogs, you hear coyotes in the distance. And, you know, it's it's really cool. And it's really kind of scary when you hear something you've never heard before. That's kind of weird because yes. I'm a Bigfoot guy, yes. too. <laughs> <laughs> and I know one night me and a friend of mine were sitting on our, our back porch over there about 3 in the morning. And we heard something neither one of us have ever heard in the woods before it was so creepy and even though i've never seen one we just kind of joke and we chalk up the sound of bigfoot (laughs) wow wow yep but you know i'm i'm sure that you're gonna figure out a way to you know get get those sounds down and you're gonna use them for something i know because if nothing else it's a reason to go skydiving again might as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I say, nature's got its own soundtrack, and some of it is just amazing. You know, you look at this little creature, and all of a sudden you hear this big sound come out of it. Yeah. You're like, what in the world? Between that and you see interesting patterns in the landscape mm-hmm. that it's just like you've seen these on pictures, but when you experience it yourself, it's a different feeling. Because pictures, you can get feelings from pictures, but when you're actually experiencing it, it, it takes it to a new level. Like one of the things I saw when I was jumping is I saw these big circles, kind of like crop circles. Mm-hmm. They're just so beautiful, different colors. Oh, my gosh. The place that I skydived was Yosemite. It was mm-hmm. my first time going to Yosemite National Park, and that place is like a magical paradise. Oh, yeah. Like, whoa. It's, oh, it's so breathtaking. I mean, the pictures just don't do it justice. Like, being there and seeing Glacier's Point and seeing, like, these beautiful mountain formations. Oh, it's so inspiring. It's like, I'm so grateful to be alive. When I see things like that, when I'm experiencing nature like that. Yeah, and, and the palette, you know, just there are colors in a, you know, one, one thing about working like I do, I've, I see sunrises a whole lot. And just the, the colors is like, you, you know, see sunrises? every morning. Yeah. Wow. I love the sunrise. Oh, yeah. Oh. And, uh, you know, the colors of them just, Man, there's nothing like it. So I dig what you're saying. I mean, there's there's so many things that you just got to stop and look at. Yes, yes. Some wise person told me a long time ago that if you wait 15 minutes before the sun actually wakes up, there's like special insights that you'll get. And first I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. So I started doing it just to try it out. And, it, and it's right. There's certain sounds that happen in the morning. There's certain ways that the birds talk to each other that's different than when they're out in the afternoon or at nighttime. And it's something you can only experience at 
sunrise. Yeah. And it's just so beautiful, like the beauty of it. It's just so divine. I just love it. And it inspires a lot of my songs right now. Yeah. Like, okay. the sun is so important. And it's just it's so easy to overlook, you know? Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I've I've always been a hunter. You know, I'm not a trophy hunter. I when I hunt, I, if I get a deer, I use every every bit of it that I can because to me that respects the animal that just gave its life for me, for me and my family. But you know, I'll go out and I'll get in my stand because I've I don't hunt out of one that just attaches to a tree. I hunt out of what they call a tower stand, which is like a big box on stilts. And sitting out there, you know, in the morning before sunrise, it, it's just dead quiet for a while. And and like I say, you can, you can hear the world wake up. And you see the light just start slowly fading in, you know. It's just, it's, there's there's not a feeling like it, you know. Even on a day when I don't get anything, which is a lot more often than the days when I did. Um, it's, wow. It's just, it, it puts a peace in your soul. You know, to me, that's that's like my church. Ooh, it's like poetry in the sky. Yeah. You know, and just to see where, you know, I've, I've sat in that stand a thousand times. I know that every little bitty area of that, that place that I'm at. But you can be looking at something when it's dark, and you can just see the light just keep, you know, just get a little bit brighter. Like somebody's got it on a fader. And everything you're looking at just kind of changes as you're watching it. And it's it's so neat. And if it's raining a little bit, oh, that makes it even better. Wow. Yeah. Yep, I mean, I've gone out there mornings where I didn't even carry a gun with me. I carried my camera and just took pictures. And it's, that's, it works for the soul. It's medicine for the soul. It's like music. Exactly. And I'm a strong believer in music healing because I've had it happen. Uh, I I believe in music healing as well. The music that I'm composing and creating right now is designed for healing. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because, you know, like a long time ago when I felt like super sad woman. I would tend to go towards music that was sadder. Mm-hmm. And now I don't do that. <laughs> no, when I'm in those moments of abrupt like sadness or, you know, reflecting in, in those moments of feeling less happy. Mm-hmm. I I tend to gravitate towards music that is happier than my state. Mm-hmm. And it elevates me to that frequency, the same frequency of the music I'm hearing. Yeah. And in order to use music as medicine, you have to be mindful that the vibrations of the music you're listening to actually affect your mood. And so if you listen to music that's designed for healing, or high energy music, or music that's even mellow, or music that just has that intent with the creation or with the whole like composition, it changes the way you experience it and in ways that you're not really cognizant of. And I just think that's very interesting. And when I discovered the healing power of music, I just decided that was the path that I'm going to be on for a very long time because it's so beautiful to to help myself and to help others and to help humanity through the sounds that I'm making and creating in the world. Mm -hmm. And the whole planet can heal together. It's not a separate thing because we're all one. And so my healing is everyone's healing and mm. everyone else's healing is my healing. And we're all in this together. When one person cries, we all cry. When one person heals, we all heal. Mm. When one person loves, the whole universe is in love. And I think that's just so grand and beautiful and wow. <laughs> yeah, and I, I can dig it. We, we need healing right now, that's for sure. Um, yeah, you know, as far as, you know, the way music makes you feel, it's, it's funny. It reminds me of that old movie, The Jerk with Steve Martin, where he's, he's just discovered he's a little bit different from his family and he's, he's in his room real sad and crying and everything. His mom comes in there and explains everything to him and 
says, we're playing some blues out here. Would you like to come out and, and play blues with us? And he says, Mom, no songs depress me. And I, that always tickled me. But, um, huh. you know, a, a lot of people that, well, everybody that knows me and the people that listen to my shows knows I had two strokes five years ago. Um, the first one I didn't know I had, but the second one I was actually on the ambulance when I had it, and I knew about that one. Oh, definitely knew about it. But one of the things that happened with me is it gave me a really bad stutter. I mean, a really, really bad one. Huh. And I, it, I got lucky. It didn't get me physically, but it gave me things like that, um, things like I have days where I cry constantly. I have days where I'm angry all day, just things like that. And I couldn't work for about five or six months. All I could do was just stay at home. I couldn't even, wasn't even allowed to drive. And I was out in my cook shack. It's just kind of a garage type thing out there at home in Thompson. And I was listening to metal one day, just loud as I could out there. And I decided I wanted to hear a song by a guy named Monty Montgomery. He's a guitar player. And he redid a song called Romeo and Juliet. And I said, I want to hear that. So I downloaded it and I played it. And it's a it's a slower song. And he plays it on an acoustic. And I had tried singing to get rid of the stutter. And that didn't work. I couldn't sing either. And after a minute or so, I realized I was singing note for note with him perfectly. Wow. And I played it he again. Found his song. Yeah, I played it again and I kept doing it. And my wife was out on our land walking, just getting exercise. And I waved her over real, just frantically. And she ran over. She thought something was wrong. But I was able to give her the first clear I love you I had in four months. And, you know, I, I sent sent Monty a message on Facebook. You know, I felt like a, a fanboy. I, I was, you know, 44 years old writing to a guy saying, I love your song. But I let him know he made a difference because that did. And about... A month later, I actually got a phone call from him, and that was really cool. Oh, and, my gosh. Yeah. That's and, so amazing. And wow. It, you know, the mu- music heals. I'm, I'm a firm believer in that one because I'm, I'm, I'm living proof. And, uh, it's, you know, for me, it's, they say music soothes the savage beast. It does. You know, like I say, you can, you can listen to music for whatever mood you want, and... You know, when when I was a SWAT medic, I had certain songs I would listen to while I was dressing out to to kind of get me pumped up and ready to go. And when I was a clown, I had songs that I would listen to while I was putting on my makeup that would get me in that st- that frame of mind. You know, so for you me, were a mu- clown? I am a certified clown. I used to teach public safety and fire safety as a clown. <laughs> Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. Do you ever have like a rainbow curly like hair? My hair, I, my wig that I had, um, I've had one of those. And I had one, it was a bald top with green hair. But for the most part, my clown, there's, you know, they say a, a hobo is who gave up on society. And a tramp is the one that society gave up on. My clown, his name was Murray. He was kind of, the feeling was mutual. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I'd had a really good time doing that. And I, I reached a lot of kids. I learned how to do magic doing that and balloons. I have about I three. I love magic. I have about 300 different balloon animals that I can do. But yeah, But yeah, I love doing magic. I like the close-up magic that I can do. And when I do it, I never use trick coins or trick cards because somebody always wants to hold the cards after the show. <laughs> and if you hand them a trick deck, they're going to figure that out real quick. But if you just use a regular deck of cards, they'll never figure it out. Right. And plus, to me, that's just more, more pure magic. I mean, hell, anybody can buy a rigged deck and use it. It's fun because, you know, as a as a firefighter and paramedic, whenever I'd get in front of kids, I would have their attention for probably five minutes when I was in my uniform. But as a clown, you could have them all day long, and they would be able to parrot anything you said. Right. So I love that. So um, I know we talked some about the, you know, you being a data scientist and social media expert. 
And you have used that to the max to to figure out how to how to find your audience and how to grow your audience. And uh, that is well, that is pretty cool. At the end of the day, it's all about connecting with actual human beings. Yeah. And that's the part of the equation that most people overlook. Yeah. You can set up a campaign. You can set up a plan. But at the end of the day, it's about really connecting in an authentic way with other human beings. Mm -hmm. And so kind of like what you said about, you know, we need to do what we did when we did when we were in kindergarten, you know, basic things like wash your hands. Well, when it comes to connecting with human beings, it's the same mentality. Like, what did you do in kindergarten, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how were you connecting with other human beings at that age? You were connecting with other people without fear, without, oh, what is this person going to think of me? Oh, does this person think I'm weird? You weren't, you weren't asking those kind of questions at that age, right? Yeah. And so now when you're online and you're creating your social media accounts or you're trying to grow them or not grow them or whatever your objectives are, the first objective should be to think about who is the other human being on the other side that I'm trying to connect with. What are their needs, their wants? How can I contribute to that person? How can I create something that is a value that actually adds value to that person, to that human being, and make it more humanistic? That's the important part. Very That's cool. the part that people lose. Yeah, and people lose that, especially online, because it's when you post things online, you don't get to talk to all the people who react to it. So at the end of the day, sometimes you don't even know how it's impacting the other person. Mm -hmm. And so the more you think about, okay, the thing I'm posting, the content I'm giving the world, does this create an environment of impact? Or does this create an environment of negativity? And for me, I want to create content like music that creates environments for impact and not environments for negativity. And to create like a safe space through music, through songwriting, through the notes that facilitates that in the hearts and minds of all humanity and all things that are living beings and creation because at the end of the day it's, it's just beyond human it's plants too like plants listen to music They're, they don't have the same nervous system that we do that respond the way that we do in our human body but they plants respond to music hmm. and you have orchestras around the world now <laughs> that are playing the plants <laughs> for that very reason mm -hmm. that's awesome you know it's beyond human beings when it comes to the music creation process and what music actually, how it impacts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I know, you know, I'm, I know I'm on with well, my social media and stuff. I'm on Facebook and I'm on, you know, Twitter and Instagram. And I just, just started doing Twitter. I never could kind of wrap my head around it for a while. And, uh, I love Twitter. Yeah, I do. I'm growing to love it really quick. And uh, Instagram, I'm okay on, but I don't do a lot on there because I can't really post links on there. But I, I still do pictures and that kind of stuff, and it's it's still fun. I, I like getting on there and just you know looking at everybody, and I, I have people that like you know, of course, everybody that I follow, and it's it's a lot of fun. But I. You know, I wish that there was a way to make make it where I had uh, the million followers. But at the same time, I know everybody that follows me, and that's really cool too. So it's it's kind of a kind of a difference of I, I hate to say quality over quantity because I'd still like quantity, but at the same time, <laughs> I'm I'm happy with the people that I have. Right. Right. But well, I would, it's not I would, about how many followers you have. It's mm -hmm. about how you're impacting people. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And and hopefully I have a good impact. You know, before we started recording, you know, we talked about, you know, okay, I don't do the radio voice and ask the canned questions. And, 
you know, it kind of goes along with what you're saying. You know, I can do that and I can be like every other show out there. Every other show out there that interviews you is going to ask you the same questions. And this one, we just kind of ramble and we talk about what we talk about. And to me, that's a lot more fun because, you know, Fred Snyder, I interviewed him, the lead singer from the B-52s. And he taught me a valuable lesson. I had written three pages worth of notes because I've always been a huge fan of the B-52s. And when I got him on the show, I I started asking him about it, and he said a sentence that just kind of hit home for me. (laughs) He said, that's 40 years worth of history. They can read about that in the book. Let's talk about what's happening now. And at first I was like, oh, crap, there goes this show. And I just kind of relaxed and just let it go and said, well, we're not going to talk to what the, the history. So, and we wound up having a really good show. I mean, he's such a nice guy and that, that hit home with me, you know, and it, it made me decide that this wasn't going to be the, the show where the only difference between this and the other shows was the voice, you know, because while people may love your music, you know, I've I've learned I've got people whose music I love, but when you look at the person, they're not. You know, you don't really like them a lot, but at the same time, you have people you don't know if you like their music or not, but you get to know them, and you're like, I can dig. I understand the music now, and you make that connection. And you, one, you make a new friend. Two, you start listening more to the music, and you like new music. So it's a great thing, right. and we we connect. Like I say, we it, you're you're not just a musician, you're a person on here. And I love That's that. Beautiful. And I've I've had some really good guests and I've you know, I I figured out a long time ago also that you know, well yes, I'm interviewing you and and this is all for a purpose, you know, it's it's to help promote everybody and you know, to have fun. But at the same time, I don't feel like it's an interview. I feel like we're sitting here making friends. And that's worked for me for, for a long while. But I'll tell you. It's, that's amazing that you have a show where you just have conversations with friends. That's beautiful that yeah. you can do that. Yeah, and, and to me, I've you know, I've done character videos on YouTube and things like that and the the videos and the shows I've done, you know, the ones where I just put myself out there, those are the ones that have gotten the best response. You know, without me even worrying about the response, they've got the best ones. Um, earlier this year, my brother passed, and me and him had didn't have the greatest relationship for a long time, and it was on both of our parts. You know, it was it wasn't just one one of us fault. And I sat down and I decided one day, okay, I'm going to do a show for him. And he was a huge Leonard Skinner fan. I mean, he literally had hitchhiked across the country several times following the band. Wow. And I, I was going to re- I was going to license two of their songs, one to play at the beginning, one to play at the end. And I looked at the cost of license and I'm like, man, that's, that's high for this. And, I did some research and learned about fair use where you can play a piece of the song and you have to comment on it and, you know, do tell about it and that's legal and you're, you're fine. And the first song was free bird. And that was his favorite song in the world. And there was another wow. song called the ballad of Curtis Lowe. And it's the first song he ever played me from him. And I played each a piece of each of those and just talked about him. I talked about my brother and, you know, things like that. And that episode just, it, it shot through the roof. And I'm like, really? I just did this for my therapy. But it was me putting myself out there. And I figured out when people do that, everybody understands that you can spot a fake from a mile away. Right. And, and with me, what you see is what you get. You know, there's, I'm nearly 50 years old. Why put on airs? Why, why lie to people? You know, it is what it is. If you like me, like me. If you don't, oh, well. (laughs) (laughs) But, but I tell you, I will jabber on this thing all day. You know that, don't you? Yep. (laughs) But, um, 
I tell you, I've had a great time with you. You know, you're you're welcome on here anytime. All you got to do is call and say, hey, I want to record. And I'm a set of stairs from hitting the buttons. All I got to do. Thank you. Um, tell, tell my folks where we can find you at. And I'm also going to put it in my show notes where they can click and get a hold of you. Okay. You can find me on shalitaburke.com. That's spelled S-H-E-L-I-T-A-B-U-R-K-E.com. And on social media, you can find me at at symbol Shalita Burke, spelled S-H-E-L-I-T-A-B-U-R-K-E. Okay. Very cool. And like I say, you're welcome back on here anytime. Everybody go check her out. And you you will love this music. You'll love her as a person. She is so great. I'm I'm happy we've done this. And I, I feel like I've made a new friend. And you've you've definitely got one in Atlanta now, that's for sure. Oh, thank you. If you come down here, you will be fed, I guarantee. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's funny. My wife and kids, um, everybody I, I talk to on here, I, I extend that invitation because it's it's a true one. I I love cooking, and my wife's like, you know, when all these people start coming to Atlanta, we're, you're going to be constantly cooking. I said, good. I like cooking for my friends. <laughs> oh, so, that's awesome that you cook. So yep, yep, yep. So all you got to do, let me know when you're heading toward Atlanta. Let me know what you want. Daddy'll cook it. 